Today's chapter is capital goods. Capital goods as a base industry. Any country who really want to progress, they really need to have a fundamental foundation of capital goods settled. At present, the capital goods sector contributes 1.8% to GDP and almost 12% of India's manufacturing output. $32 billion and a total market size of $92 billion. We have a threefold opportunity to look at, to address a market of $92 billion. The growth rate of capital goods production in India uh, is around 29%, almost 30%. Target production size capital goods is around 100 billion by 2025. Sector is generating employment of 5 million people. We need to be globally competitive, self-reliant, sustainability. What will it take us to become a globally competitive? Not only globally competitive, even better than global. Today, India with 1.8 is just 13 billion. 30. And that's where, you know, the biggest change that needs to be driven. One, where is the Indian IP? For you to be globally competitive, you know, the biggest challenge is whether you have the IP or the core technology in it. Create your own talent and people and upskill them. The mission mode is about getting the industry. Yeah the government and the academia are together. Are we moving in the right speed or the right velocity? Speed, certainly not. Direction, yes. Technology security for India is going to be a big challenge. So, Atmanirbal Bharat has to be looked at exactly from that perspective. There needs to be a PLI scheme for capital goods for doing semiconductors. That is what I'm saying is the whole kind of missing. Good point highlighted. Because uh, yeah. I wanted to add to please, what, uh, please, please enter. Yeah, Nilesh mentioned. In fact, I come from that industry. I've been working on that particular project uh, for quite some time now. Uh, it's been about two years we have been uh, working and engaging with uh, the equipment makers. Most of these equipments are coming from either Japan, Korea, Taiwan, or hmm. um, maybe the US uh, yep. somewhere. But uh, on, on the other side, the government is also working a draft policy in terms of facilitating exactly what uh, sure. is mentioned. Um, there is already a policy for facilitating capital goods import for uh, these manufacturing of semiconductors. Yeah. Um, but we wanted to actually look at improving that, attracting more talent, uh, most important talent, as, as you rightly mentioned. Today, uh, people who are sitting in most of these companies who are designing and uh, uh, holding the significant positions of importance in uh, the uh, so-called Silicon Valley companies uh, are majorly from India. In the last 25 years, Chinese contribution, China's contribution in R&D spend yeah. was 2% and it has gone to 27% in 20 years. Ours has gone from 1.8% to 2.9% in the same period. So how do we expect to compete with China, when our R&D spend is not there, this is one area where R&D is core. There is no policy which can allocate, say that R&D has to be done. Being competitive globally means, one, we need to have IP. Second is the talent. It's a long-term game. It's, it's not a short-term It's a short-term game. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Number one. We are focusing on Make in India. Yeah. Make in India for India is where we stop it. That's where the problem starts. Now, as long as we have an aspiration to supply globally, and that has to percolate across, yeah. then we can look at uh, expanding ourselves. Because most of these countries, Germany was not making for Germany. Japan was not making for J Japan. All of them started making for them to mm -hmm. initiate, but quickly started exporting and started focusing on the global market. And that's where our challenge starts. We are g getting there, as uh, Nilesh was mentioning, we are in the right direction. Speed, yeah. As a new age company, Zetwork needs to help these people, right? Become more R&D oriented. One is creating that spectrum of ecosystem which will help these people to be more R&D oriented, more IP creation for global. How are we doing it? Yeah. So, see, the, the story of the Indian economy is very interesting. <laughs> From a predominantly agriculture-based economy, we just switch to services. services and we miss the entire industrialization True. phase. How do we become, so you talked about being very efficient and cost cooperative. Eventually, Correct. If we make it India for India and for the world, we have to no be the best yep. in quality and cost. Now, how do we become cooperative? One is our infrastructure definitely needs to be far mega scale. Uh, we can't operate in smaller silos across the country. Again, good work happening there. And second is, see, any manufacturing process happens across multiple nodes. Not everything gets manufactured under one shed. Today, the technology table which enables or connects these different nodes of manufacturing 
doesn't or it's it's still in a very primitive True. stage and that is what the role of most of the new age companies i would say is how do you connect these different manufacturing nodes bring in high level of visibility which in which in return will directly impact the efficiency sure in the whole supply chain everyone has got their own operating systems which is great but unless these are all connected with each other there will not be any first of all reliability and quality becomes a question mark because then everyone does quality checks at different points which is not the most efficient way of doing it sure and uh, second is it also improves speed Yeah. So uh, those technologies are something which on which of course the industry should also work uh, to connect the different nodes of manufacture. Suppose today Anthem comes to you and say that you know hey, I want to use a network platform uh, on understanding where my raw material is going to come from, who are the suppliers in the country today, yeah. possibly potentially can have a you know a supplier ecosystem for me. Uh, how would they work with you? Ecosystem again, like I said, comprises of different nodes. There is raw material, then there is in process yeah. uh, some value addition, then there is some value addition, then it would reach a Vedanta, then Vedanta would sell to their customers. True. Today, this entire chain, to my mind, is not as fragmented as it can be. It's a very person-driven uh, decision. Uh, While, of course, there are broader corporate policies to work around these, uh, but. Uh, unless we make it very systematic and maybe have an algo around it right if this is the grade of raw material at this price point i want to buy instead of being a very person dependent experience dependent can be translated into an algorithm got it right which every time does the same and also becomes smarter with time sure so uh, so that we move away from very person dependent decision making to to and that's that's what would lead to greater efficiency and hence competitiveness the issue starts with where do you want to be and then the rest equation has to be worked out india is today at maybe a very low level compared to uh, china china contributes to about 30% of the overall uh, the world uh, manufacturing uh, percentage yeah. india is at 3% not even 3% that means and india grows at a late rate of about 30 or 35% with respect on the capex with respect to last year what does that mean that means the indian industry is set to grow now in case it has to grow one is the in house capabilities one is that you keep on in uh, in fact uh, importing from yeah. outside that suddenly the trend has changed there is a total shift in the manufacturing uh, capabilities across the globe the competitors come from two three aspects one is obviously the quality the first part would be the quality the second part would be the all obviously will be the pricing earlier we never had this picture that the legal rights are being provided to the msmes true they are being also provided the funding to the government portal yeah not the private banks the government portals are allowing them to do transaction with the large houses at at least 3 to 4% lower than the market interest rates india has every raw material possibly in the world somewhere then the whole process value addition will happen reach to you let's say and the post is also important when we go post sales cycle we are doing a tremendously bad job on life cycle management okay our self reliant on that is hugely drawback right so customer feels the pain but we can't help it first our mindset has to change so encouragement of r and d is the first thing but it only happens when there is a policy on it yeah none of this companies today we have all big companies but government has no policy ki how much of their revenue should go into a skill development policy true till that comes we will not encourage because every man is seen as a revenue hour yes <laughs> and till i see every man as a revenue hour i am not going to encourage him for r&d how much we speak and then r&d is seen as a cost true r and the day i start seeing <coughs> r&d as a revenue as an investment it changes engagement begins much earlier yes how many of our industries have actually gone and changed the syllabus of the colleges for teaching that particular subject number 1 number 2 how many of the research programs in the academy are driven by the industry say solve my problem how do we create a center of excellence or a bridge that can bring all of us together industry preparedness as i said so when i say linear versus non linear means today i have a pool of talent globally who can help you on a gig operating model and work on a platform to give you the best designs possible in 3 days of time which earlier would have taken you 3 years 
many times when you are working with the customers, this is the biggest problem you would be facing, right? Yeah. They are coming from a 30 years, 40 years of an operating model successfully working. They know the inch by inch. You know, there is a 40, 30, 40 years of, you know, sort of a capital goods industry. These are traditionally huge. And now suddenly I'm looking at an operating model to change which says non-linear exponential models working with you guys, let's say. How would you change that? The time of technology has come. Uh, yeah. We are probably 30, 40 years behind US, but there's uh, rapid development happening there. And uh, and people are, uh, and, and most of the customers are far more amenable to accept these changes today. True. They were maybe I agree. Around. The problem is we haven't thought through. We are not deploying the non-linear thinking as operating model in the organizations. And therefore, we are lacking this. Corporates are more open to try these uh, ideas and experiment. These are happening at individual corporate levels. Now, it's whether it can happen at a at an India level, at a cluster level, at an industry level, it probably can. And uh, these are getting facilitated by these networking events which we attend. Mm but not in its true sense. We are open to changes. We are working with startups. We are having them into it. It has become more of a buzzword than actually actual results being coming out of it. Because for an actual result to come out, it's a huge investment. You need to change your shop floor. You need to change your factory floors. You need to change your supply chain. You need to change your systems which you are deployed. The real change will be when you create a reintegrated operating model. Being sustainable is now becoming part of the organization. It's no more a corporate social responsibility. It's no more a discussion which is happening around saying that, you know, I will be, you know, carbon neutral. Your customers will reject the order if you are not sustainably manufactured. Customers' playbook is changing. The way they are going to buy from you, the way they are going to expect service from you, and the way they are going to take sustainability seriously with you. Major part of Indian operations are based on customer requirements. That goes yeah. without saying. Why? The type of customer finally, or whatever is his scope of work or defined specification, you need to work on that. But if you see, yes, the, the client's requirements are changing. Very fast it is changing over the years. Why it is changing? The government policies are changing. The government is these days are involving many of the best of the consultants to frame the contract. Yeah. So the provisions of the, uh, the, the, the environment, the carbon uh, content, the things like you have to have solar facility, you have to have a uh, water neutral facility, yeah. such things are moving in. So the also the contractors or the service providers are working towards that. Please. We are approaching again sustainability but in a fragmented way. True. And anything which moves fragmentally doesn't matter. Network is bringing the sort of a, a you know visibility to the supply chain. Now within this visibility, there is a new animal I would call it, which is called sustainability animal has to be there. So far, I am treating it as an animal because we don't know how to deal with this monster. That's why I'm I'm, I'm picking it. Right. Once we know how to deal with this monster, we will not call it. Uh, but then in the in the visibility perspective, it is also visible that I, they are not sustainable. The ecosystem is not bringing it forward. How do you help uh, bring that flavor out? Yes, yes, as a topic has uh, become uh, uh, far more mainstream True. Uh, in the last two years, uh, where uh, every customer uh, that you work with, along with so there's a standard vendor onboarding process and there's a big checklist on compliance and ESG as well, which is a great sign. I mean, you know, it's it's only when they ask that we you start looking into the level two and level three of how to implement these. Yeah. But even at a policy level, the efforts to you know, bring more and more MSMEs mainstream, bringing, bring more and more uh, suppliers on the banking channels. These are all good signs where the people who were, uh, who were not really in the sight of a lot of us, but who are working in building this nation in remote corners of the country, but they were, you know, nobody was really directly taking care of them. They're all getting mainstream through multiple levels, customers, policies, sure. which is bringing them to the forefront, which is a great sign. The speed of the work, as I said, yeah. is very important. Yeah. Yes. At what rate it is required to progress and what rate we are progressing. Yeah. Sustainability is a chapter which is more should be operating on a standard operating model. Where industry should be creating an operating model, giving it to the government and the policy makers and regulators and they should mandate it for the industry to create it and evolve it over the period of time. ESG, uh, you know, actually today is a strategy. Yeah. You have to 
probably relook at everything that you're doing. Sure. And tell you very frankly, we are in the steel industry. And to say carbon uh, and steel industry, you know the dynamics. Yes. So to become or to even make green steel, actually it's the Kalani group that is setting the standards along with the government of India. So there is a whole lot of policy work that's happening in India. And I'm very proud of the kind of work we are doing sure. with government of India in setting the standards. Yeah. To say what does it mean to do it and how do you really implement it? Because every time you pour one, True. You, you, you know how much of carbon you're putting True. in the system. So that's one big thing. And there is certainly uh, a big push that is coming from all the manufacturers. If I want to use parts from you, it has to manufactured be. in a manner which yeah. is green. Green. Today, India is growing at a particular rate, 30%, 35% of that. Do we put a policy in place to see to it that this is the end of it or it, it should be going up to X level? It's probably it's very difficult once it sure. starts growing. And we have examples where uh, countries have been growing industrially and then they have decided now we will uh, have a deceleration, not acceleration anymore. Sure. We have seen those things. So probably uh, this is a big question to be understood. We have started to engage with our uh, end suppliers, which, which means our raw material suppliers, probably people who are mining um, uh, limestones for that matter. Yep. So I, around seven, eight years back, uh, I personally have visited the, these uh, facilities. We have done an audit along with uh, uh, one of the top consulting firms in terms of identifying, first of all, whether they are compliant with the global standards uh, uh, on GRI um, and uh, then work with them in terms of uh, gaps which we have identified and see to that they meet those gaps and have an yearly review with them and whether they'll be able to uh, sustain this. So this we have done uh, across the uh, uh, company, across various units. Uh, this comes from uh, two aspects. One is there's a lot of best practices which we adopt from our international units. International units, say for example in Australia, I've, I've worked there uh, uh, in one of the underground mines there. Um, the standards which is requested or required to be met there is completely different. Uh, the one uh, probably in South Africa, again, completely different. They have high standards. Now, again, coming back to the point of standards, what is India's participation in setting global, global standards? Self-reliant, you probably thought about the global competitiveness and the sustainability. These are three pillars in a capital good industry is the most difficult. In any other industry, it's easier to bring in. Let me tell you. Right? It's very easy to bring in that way. But in this industry, it's the most difficult task to do that. How do we converge into one? Directionally, we are on the right track. You know, there's a lot of uh, momentum. They're talking, you know, it's still, these are good problems to have. Which organization we should use to certify our building and not to have any organization to certify. So I'm saying, directionally, we seem to be on the right track. Velocity is, of course, uh, could be better. You yeah. know? <laughs> we can move as fast as uh, we can. Nothing can satiate the speed of everyone. Sure. So, uh, but directionally, we are talking about the right things. Uh, policy tailwinds are extremely strong. Yeah. Uh, the new breed of talent which is coming up today, we have 22, 23, 24 year old coming People. up uh, yes. who understand the business, who can explain a PNL. So, uh, talent wise, we seem to be set. Of course, we, we can do far more. And, uh, and if we keep on this track and just stay focused on what we want to build, we get uh, that. We can. We can get there. So what is that one word you would like to put Speed. In? Speed? Innovate. Change the concept of innovation. Execute. I want to leave five things with you guys. Right? <laughs> if you can remember. One, industry needs to transform. The capital goods industry needs to transform. And I think to transform capital industries, we need five pillars. The first one is the leadership pillar. Second pillar is operating pillar. Third pillar is not innovation, but pace of innovation. The fourth pillar is, is actually ecosystem. Any guesses, fifth pillar? Don't look at technology, look at platform. I will leave these thought process with you guys. But it's an honor, it's a pleasure to see you here today, giving you your precious time, your experience, your knowledge. <laughs>